the hell's going on? This is not Madame de Swords, you know. What's going on? Jack, please. I'm trying to get a shot. Oh, oh, well, hang on a minute. You've got to have me in it. Just a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 the boat's there. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Right, look, I suppose it's just a, a bit more natural, you know, Dave and Roger working. Alone. Oh. Get more of you later. Yeah, well, uh, you know where to find me. I'll be in the office all day. So will the smile. <laughs> yeah, thanks. How's that look? Fine. A few more between the sheds, though, Bill. Well, what do you think? Vanessa, all we need is a red carpet, and the customers will start thinking of their royalty. That's the secret of success. Treat the customers like royalty, they'll keep coming back. By the way, how's Avril? Nervous at having to give over I don't blame her. When Congreve said, no hell of fury like a woman scorned, he obviously hadn't met Charles Frere. She'll be all right. I hope so. Come in. Are you busy? Yes, very. Can you fix an appointment with Rachel? I tried, but she can never fit me in. I'm sorry, Leo, but not this week. I know you've got a lot on with the court case and everything, but it won't take long. It's not just the court case. I, I'm on my way to a meeting, then I've got a luncheon All appointment. All I need is one minute to clear something with you. Please. Look. If it's about the powerboat, I will put forward your recommendation to the board as soon as I get that Sabi Fernandez deal signed, sealed, and delivered. All right? How would you feel if you didn't have to go to the board to raise the capital expenditure for the boat? <laughs> well, how else do you expect me to find that kind of finance? Sponsorship. Ah, oh, be wasting my time. If I could find a sponsor willing to go along with it, would you? Well, yes. Yes, of course I would. That's all I wanted to know. Well, hang on a minute, Leo. I mean, you can't expect a sponsor to cover all your development costs. Oh, I don't know about that. In fact, I have a luncheon appointment of my own to discuss it with someone who might be interested. Oh? Who's that? When I have more details and the agreement's ready to be signed, sealed and delivered, I'll fix up an appointment with Rachel and let you know. Let me get this right. He denied everything? He tried to make it sound as if he were doing you a favour. What? I suppose initially he did. I mean, he lent me the money. At that rate of interest? Nobody else was prepared to. No bank would touch me. Well, he also tried to suggest he was doing me a favour as well. You know what the annoying thing is? I mean, I suppose unintentionally he did. He brought us together. <laughs> What's his next move likely to be? I don't know. But whatever it is, we're going to have to be one step ahead. Yeah, what about Laura? Well, I'm not worried about Laura. Huh? No, you just tell her that your shares are not for sale and that's the end of it. <sighs> I don't think it's going to be quite as simple as that. So you don't deny that you instructed your broker to purchase shares on your behalf in McLean Leisure? No, but that was before I was aware of Mr Frere's interest. I'm not concerned about when you purchased the shares at this point. Well, I rather think the actual date is relevant. I asked you a direct question, Mr Urquhart. For the record, please give the court a direct answer. Do you or do you not deny that you instructed your broker to purchase the shares? No, of course I don't deny it. Thank you. Now, as far as the actual date is concerned, according to your broker's slips, that transaction took place on the 12th. Yes, that's correct. Where did you first declare your interest in purchasing the shares? Well, I'm afraid I can't recall the actual date. Can you recall a meeting you had with your broker on the 3rd of the same month? Not in precise detail. Nevertheless, you requested the meeting to discuss your investment portfolio, did you not? Yes including a proposed investment in McLean Leisure? I have no such recollection. Your broker does. Objection, my lord. Any recollection of Mr Urquhart's broker is hearsay and therefore inadmissible as evidence. If you'd allow me to proceed with my line of questioning, my lord, I'm 
merely trying to ascertain precisely when Mr. Urquhart first declared his intention to purchase the shares from the date the actual transaction took place. Thank you, my lord. Now, according to an entry in his desk diary, your broker made a note to check McLean Leisure shares on the third of the month in question. Well, that hardly constitutes an intention to purchase the shares. Then what does it constitute in your view, Mr. Urquhart? Well, I was probably interested in the overall performance of the shares. And just what exactly fueled your interest? The fact that Relton Marine had entered into negotiations with McLean Leisure on behalf of Freer Holdings? I was totally unaware those negotiations had taken place until the 10th. Your chief executive of Freer Holdings, Mr. Urquhart, I would submit that you were quite well aware that those negotiations were taking place not on the 10th, but on the 3rd, exactly the same time as Mr. Freer. These are lovely, Francis. We have brought the documents, haven't you? There was a time in my courting days when I was only required to bring a lady flowers. The documents are far more important. I told you, Kate, I can't show them to you. Francis! But I recognise their importance to you, and incidentally to myself. My association with the mermaid goes back longer than yours, you know. My father commissioned his first boat at the yard when I was six, taught me to sail in it, and the yard's built me three boats over the years, including my present one, which you persuaded me to buy, if you remember. So I don't want to see the old mermaid developed into a concrete carbuncle any more than you do. Good. Give me a hand and open that bottle, will you? Oh. Francis, please, please let me read the minutes of that meeting. No, you can't. Why not? Because they're private. Oh. All I can do at this stage is give you a lead. Well, at least that's a start. I have strict confidence, Kate. I don't want to find myself court-martialed by the mayor. She's another determined woman like yourself. Hurry up and open the bottle. Then we can have some lunch. What will you have, Leo? Uh, I think I'll try the Caesar salad. Thanks. I'll have rib of beef, please. Rare and with a green salad. So. Vanessa Andenberg tells me you're looking for a sponsor. That's right. I believe she forwarded on my proposals. I believe she did. And what do you think? If you're expecting me to recommend to my board that they accept your proposals, I prefer to hear what you think first, Leo. What about the engine concept? I pay my technical people to do that, Leo. And they will go over that specification with a fine tooth comb. Thank you. I'm more interested in your commercial plans. You head Relton Marine's powerboat division, yes? That's right. How have sales been since you took over? Up 10% on target. I'm convinced if we had a higher profile on the racing circuit, our sales could be even higher. So long as your boat wins. No one in racing gets anywhere coming second. Especially the sponsor. And if the boat loses, the sponsor loses £200,000. But if it wins, the sponsor can recoup his development costs in no time at all. You really believe it'll be that easy? I wouldn't say easy. But if you're asking me if I think it's a viable proposition, then the answer's most definitely yes. So... Viable? Your own company won't risk the cost? Relton manufacture and distribute. We're not geared up to exploiting endorsement opportunities. From what Vanessa tells me, your company, Confederated Industries, is. That's why I decided to offer you first right of refusal. Consider it. And if we do refuse? I'm sure your competitors wouldn't make the same mistakes, Alan. No. I'm sure they wouldn't. You're a very persuasive and determined young man, Leo. 